Hi guys, welcome back. The mozzies are out, big time. This is episode two of the, uh, the poncho. And uh, first things first, what I, what I need to do is get a fire going, get rid of these mozzies. Uh, today's been wet. Um, it's just calmed down now. I think it's going to stay dry from now on. But uh, time to get a fire on and get something cooked because I'm getting bitten to pieces. So let's just see how this five pound saw does. Like the silkies, it seems that it works when you pull. That's where it does the most work. But it's going through here with no effort. No effort at all. That would be great. I could split it and batten it if I want to. We'll see when we get back to the fire. Having that pull, when it pulls like that, you've got so much control over it. It's it. You're not forcing. On some of the other saws you can get, you can force. And they bend like that, and even snap. That's not what you want. The actual curve on it there, the arch, makes it easier when you're pulling. A lot easier. I don't know if you can see these bugs, but... Ooh, baby. They like me tonight. So, let's get cracking. Harvesting this spruce, I'm making sure I'm going to pick the branches that are off the ground. And what I've got is plenty of little twigs there for the kindling to start the fire off. And then what I do is slowly move from these little bits, break them up, break them up, break them up, break them up until the uh, until we get to the shoulder. And as you can see, we have fat wood right in the centre there, so that will be good for burning. The wood's dry itself, so we've got a better chance of uh, getting this fire going. Like I say, it was raining all yesterday, and uh, raining for most of the part today. It's around about five, five o'clock now in the evening, so uh, it's been dry for about an hour, so we need to optimise our chances of uh, making this fire work so we don't have to spend too much energy um, trying over and over and over again and exhausting ourselves until we get a decent good fire. So I'll get cracking with this guys and I'll see you in a short while. <laughs> There we go, we've got plenty to be uh, getting on with now. So uh, let's make a start and get this fire going, eh? Whoo! Thirsty work, this. Eh? 
what I'm going to do is make a little bit of a TP fire. So uh, start off with a kindling resembling a TP with an opening. And that's we can put our fat wood inside and uh, any other combustibles inside the kindling, and uh, hopefully that will make it uh, go up in flames. I'm getting bit into pieces, here, guys. I better get a move on. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put on the bottom of the TP a little raft. Nice, clean burning, no smoke coming from it. Proves it's uh, burning efficiently. It's lovely and warm, lovely. Okay guys, whilst the, uh, the pot is cooking, um, We'll just leave that now for 10 minutes or so, just whilst uh, it gets a good boil on, and then um, then I'll do the uh, the dumplings and uh, stick the dumplings in there. And they'll take about 15-20 minutes. So whilst um, whilst I'm doing that, guys, what I want to do is do what I said I would do in the first episode, as far as the poncho is concerned. That is, show you how we can make it into a sleeping bag. So first of all, let's. Spread the uh, poncho out. There's a wubby, of course. Oh, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my head up on this side so it's slightly higher. And um, the first thing we need to do really is to uh, the ground is sound, full of pine needles, but uh, it's mostly duff. Solid ground, nice and cushiony, um, but not too hard, not too solid. So any debris that we find lying around has been already cleared out of the way. What we need to do with this is um, the O-rings. We need to tie. We need to tie the uh, the wubby into the uh, into the O-rings on the poncho. So. I'll get cracking with that and then uh, I'll show you just as I'm getting near the end there and uh, and then I'll show you what we do next with the poncho as far as folding it and making it into some sort of sleeping bag. So guys what you do is start off with your first corner and just simply tie, just use an overhand, overhand knot or something like that, yeah, just tie your uh, your wubby to your poncho fairly simple and straightforward and do that all the way round and when you then when you're in it Whoa. Then when you're in it guys, and you're moving around in the night time, you're not, um, it's not sliding away from you. Yeah, so uh, keeps it all in, nicely in place. Well hopefully you can see now guys, it's starting to take some shape. And uh, just, as, just as I was tying that then, I had a little moment, a little moment to myself, you know. Taking in the vista, acclimatizing myself to this environment, listening to the sounds. Anyone know what that bird is? Some beautiful sounds out there. But uh, yeah, I was just taking a moment to myself. I thought I'd share that with you guys because. Uh, this is the beauty of it. This is the beauty of being out here in the woods. So, the fire is doing fantastic right now, and um, so are the mozzies. So I'll get cracking with this. If you just have a look over here, you can see, hopefully you can see it there. So I've tied that piece there. I think we've just got one more to do. Here. I mean, it's not rocket science, guys, is it? It's not rocket science, but, uh... Ooh, baby. Right, so... That's it. Now, oh... Whew. Yeah. Do you want to see the view from where I am, guys? I'll show you now. Uh, with the magic of the other camera. God, that's a, a terrible view, isn't it? Ooh, luckily enough, just having a look round there, there's no uh, deadfall. Or no risk of deadfall. Well, it's not a bad view to go to sleep to, is it? Really. So, right, up we get. And uh, let's just see if we've got a buy one, eh? I found myself a decent stick. Let's have a look here. Oh, we've got a boil. We've got a boil, look at that. Right, that won't take long now. I might as well start on the uh, 
the old dumplings and then we'll get back to uh, putting this uh, sleeping bag together I think guys what do you say dumplings you ever had dumplings guys hey Lancashire dumplings well that's what we're gonna have beef stew with the dumplings the Lancashire dumplings that's if everything goes according to plan right guys for the dumpling mix I'm gonna do a bit of a cheat actually I've already put it all together suet flour I'll drop the recipe in the uh, description below you know the link well the description thing I might put some links in there and stuff I never usually do because I am I'm just not that um, up on these things let's say so I'll do what I can and then um, hopefully you too can have an easy journey when you're doing your cooking right first of all what we want to do is put in the flour carefully making sure we don't spill it all over the gaff oh I can smell it now I can smell the beef stew tasty right so once you've uh, got the flour in we got a boil on there guys a boil on can you see it steaming look it's steaming right so you uh let's have a look here now so what we do is we uh got a, a wee bit of water a little bit at a time because uh, if you put too much in here at this point that's it you're scuppered I have got some extra flour just in case I do do this but it's a little bit and then let's see how that goes you see it there forming a dough Right, so that says to me I might need just a tiny bit more but not much now with this what I've used is self-raising flour and suet yeah so um, you can use just normal flour and then add baking soda and stuff like that but uh, yeah this is just uh, I'm gonna just a wee bit more there you go that's it I will not be tempted to put any more in now otherwise you can mess the goddamn thing up that's not we do not want to do that do we guys hey because I know you're excited you're excited to see my dumplings aren't you hey, no sexual uh, innuendos meant there guys this is Jed Hook Finn not Zed <laughs> Zed would have uh, put a sexual innuendo in there, no doubt, because he has that sense of humour. Good guy. Good channel as well. Very good. Zed Outdoors. Um, like so many. So many good channels out there. I was recently uh, watching one guy, uh, Muskrat Jim. He was pretty good. Well, his channel is very good, actually. I like it. Down straight to... Great talking guy, you know, got some good tips there on bushcraft. So, so what we want to do now is try and roll it into sort of like a dough. Yeah, without it sticking to your hands. Which is no mean feat. Use some flour there so it doesn't stick to my hands totally. What we're going to do is just roll it together. You can see that. We're squishing it all together like so. Right. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is...
what shall I do? Just have one massive uh, dumpling. No, no, no. Let's do this properly. Let's do this properly. What I'm going to do is I'll chop that in half. Then half again. Now I'm going to make some of these into little dumplings, but they will rise, you see. That's the thing. They will rise. So careful with that knife. Very sharp knife. Right, so just roll them into balls. Calm down Zed, calm down. And then uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going, we're laughing. Right, now what we're going to do is very graciously I'm going to add them to the uh, to the pot. Right guys, that's the boil. Right, and I'm going to now add the dumplings. And that's going to be enough really, I think. I can take the rest home. I'm going to add what's left over. I'm going to add what's left over of the water just to uh, add a bit more bump. That fire is piping up. Piping up. So. We will pop back, guys, in uh, approximately. Right, guys, that's two batteries that I've just run out. One on the uh, mini camera and the other one on the uh, the video camera. So we're onto the phone now. So there we go. We've got a little boil on. We've put the dumplings in, and uh, the dumpling, and I've put a bit more water in because, uh, well, just to give the dumpling something to float on, really, uh, add a few more juices. So. I'm going to uh, let that cook now and let that stew for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. This is a spare cooking system that I carry with me guys, it's a wood burner, but um, in places where you can't uh, make a fire uh, in the forest because of uh, the laws and so forth, um, I can use this, keeps the fire off the ground, but I'll show this in uh, a future video. We ain't really got time to go into that now, but uh, it's always good to have uh, a couple of uh, systems At your, uh, at your disposal, really, um, so you don't go hungry. Hey, <laughs> right. Shall we turn this now into some sort of sleeping bag or a sleeping bag? I know that's what you've been waiting for, guys. So we'll get on with it. Right. Now for your pillow, you can use anything. I mean, I've got my bag up there. I can put my bag along the back and use that as a pillow if I need to. Well, basically, what you've got to do is, at the side of the poncho here, what you have, you've got these like little press studs, and the press studs, they, they all obviously join together. But what you need to do is, the bottom of the sleeping bag, uh, you need to make sure that that is folded over. So when you bring your um, when you bring your sleeping bag over like so, your feet aren't going to come out the bottom. So, um, the fire's just got a second wind. Woohoo! So, we'll get cracking. Basically, what you're doing is you're pressing one press stud against another press stud. Now, the thing is with this 
system is, you uh, you may notice that as you put the press studs together, you've got another press stud here, but there's nothing to go on it. That might leave you a little bit confused, but that other press stud is so you can join, uh, say you and your buddy are out, the weather's really bad, really severe, maybe there's two or three of you, what you can do is you can join each other's poncho together to create a sort of like teepee and um, great little design uh, absolutely fantastic uh, just like the Russian model which I'm trying to think of what it is now the um, Balaclava or something like that not the Balaclava uh, Splash Plash Plaka it is Plash Plaka I hope I'm saying that right lads you'll know uh, but uh, basically what you do is you uh, just join these together so forth press them together and they're, they're hard wearing very hard wearing it's uh, a bit stiff but not in a man can or a woman so you press these together and as you can see, it's starting to form a shape now. There you go. As you can see, it's turning into a nice sleeping bag. Now the thing is with this sleeping bag, what I've got to say is, you've got it like sort of air pockets here, so this, you're going to use this, you're not going to use this in minus 10, it's not made for that. This is made for uh, just on the chance you're going to stay out for the night and the weather's mild to moderate, you know, uh, and it's going to stay pretty dry. Or you've got adequate shelter like this, even if it rains, um, I'm not going to get absolutely soaked unless we have a thunderstorm. But uh, my only sort of like concern with it, I mean, it depends on how tall you are, guys. If you're seven foot, this ain't no good for you. I'll tell you that now. I'm just over six foot. I'm six foot one. Used to be six foot two, but you know, as you get older, the spine starts to uh, contract, and uh, uh, and I'm not going to it. Not going to bore you to death. But anyway, so there we are. There we are. The sleeping bag. Now, this would be no good, would it? It's no good if I uh, if I don't demonstrate. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate. Well, first of all, just let me take my pack down. Has anyone been timing these uh, dumplings? Is it up to me again? Okay, guys, we haven't got long now. <laughs> So obviously what I would be doing now is I'd be taking my boots off and get it in there if this was night time. Oh, there you go. I'll have to lose a few pounds. <laughs> Popped open. Right, so. There you go, my feet are at the bottom now. And if uh, we're in a survival situation, let's say, I've got adequate cover. If I really need to, I can spare my legs a little bit. And that's me, guys. Ooh, God, feels good, this. Might have a bit of a snooze now, actually. We've got another five minutes before them dumplings are done. <laughs> Catch you in five. <laughs> now, if the enemy come, what's it like to get out of? 
There you go. Easy as pie. So that's it guys. Look at that. Great stuff. So that's it, that's your poncho. Poncho shelter, poncho, ground sheet, sleeping bag. What more do you want for a tenner? That was a tenner. The wubby was about eight quid, eight, nine quid, something like that. So uh, 20 quid, well worth it. So guys, let's get on with the cooking, eh? One man starving. One thing I didn't men mention, guys, is it's not a uh, flame retardant. It's not fireproof or anything like that. So you want to stay away from uh, a good distance. I'm about three feet away from the fire now. I can feel it. It's nice and warm. Um, we don't really need it. We don't really need the. F it's warm enough without the fire. But uh, obviously, I'm cooking. Uh, some chow so I'm thinking about staying tonight but uh, the reality is I'm up early doors in the morning uh, a very good friend of mine it's his birthday and uh, I'm gonna go out with him and uh, have a few sherbets and uh, it's gonna be the first time this year really uh, <laughs> I'm a busy guy busy guy looking after the kids got a job got two jobs and um, I like to do, and this is my hobby, this is my interest. So um, so it's going to be good to get out with the lads, a bit of male bonding. A lot of bushcraft is, uh, you're on your own. You're, uh, it's about survival, it's about survival. It's challenging yourself, uh, but you are, you're on your own. So um, it's good to get out with friends and uh, socialise a little bit. I love my own company, but, um, but I do miss my friends. And I've got some really, really good friends. Uh, and I've got some good friends uh, as far as the YouTube channel. Uh, friends from all over the world. Russia, uh, America, Canada, uh, Germany. And um, since I started the channel uh, last year, it's not even a year old, um, I've, I've watched some very talented people uh, and very interesting people uh, as far as uh, bushcraft is concerned. Um, and I'm not going to mention all the names. Uh, there's Mike from MC Q uh, Bushcraft. Uh, there's um, Z Outdoors. There's Lars at uh, Survival Russia. Uh, <laughs> I said I weren't going to do this. There's uh, Lonnie and Connie on uh, Far North Bushcraft. There's uh, Dave at uh, Fun in the Woods. Uh, really big monkey. He's great, fantastic. Uh, Muskrat Jim. Um, just to name a few, there's some fantastic, fantastic YouTube uh, channels out there, all with a massive wealth of knowledge. Uh, and um, uh, it's good to be a part of a part of uh, a group around the world. Uh, so uh, if it ever does kick off, um, we'll keep an eye out for each other, eh? But uh, anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's get on with the. Um, the dumplings, let's see what it's like, eh? Let's see what the chow's looking like. <laughs> Take one of the dumplings out now and just see what they're like. It should be done that now. Oh man, they look absolutely fantastic. The smell, the aroma is just, oh, it's, oh to die for. Look at that. Now that is your Lancashire dumpling, my friends. Suet, self-raising flour. And I'm going to open one up now. And then you can see, see what they're like. So let's see if I can do this now. Just one second, guys. So I hope you can still hear me there. I'm just opening, I'm just opening my knife out. Right, let's just see. Let's just see what this is like inside. Oh, it's done. That is done. That's beautiful. So when you can, when, I don't know if you can see there, but uh, 
just gives a second. I've got a torch, won't be a second. So if you look, when it looks like it's bread on the inside, as you can see there, that's when you know it's done. Beautiful. Let's get in there, eh? Can't wait to try these. Ooh, what about that, guys? Look at that. Ooh, yeah, beautiful. Oh, oh my God. I'm so hungry. I'm going to just chow down on that now. Check that out guys, beautiful dumplings, beef, potatoes, carrots, onions, green pepper, absolutely wonderful. And there's more guys, I'll save it for you. Oh now I'm going to eat this. Ooh. Thanks for watching guys, this is Jed signing out, it's been my pleasure and I hope you've learned something today, or uh, found it entertaining at least. Um, some of you guys out there will be familiar with some of the things that I've done today and you'll be familiar with the poncho but it's nice to share. And it's, this is just me telling my story, so, mmm, fluffy dumplings, beautiful, beautiful. So yes, thanks guys, uh, take care, uh, look forward, look out for um, future posts, press the bell, uh, subscribe and uh, all them good things and uh, until next time, you take care, look after yourself and I'll see you on the next sort of thing. Ciao for now.